that your leadership in this effort will uh, be a beacon of light for other communities and uh, in the city so we can uh, take this show on the road and really turn things around in the city. So thank you all very much. periods which everyone can count on to plan accordingly. We will provide for the safety of initiative volunteers and all partners. And so one of the things that we need to look out for today is the weather. We're going to make sure we keep our volunteers nice and dry. So logistics, if you need resources to do that, umbrellas or raincoats or whatever, uh, please make that happen. Number three is to support the operations of the Baltimore Police Department during this initiative. There's going to be uh, some crime fighting going on some removal of, of some uh, bad actors in the drug trade, amongst other things. So we're going to be supporting the police department doing that. Function, this is very important for all stakeholders. Function at all times as respectful guests in the Oliver neighborhood. Act, act to provide information to the residents of Oliver's na Oliver neighborhood regarding resources that are available to the community. Identify city service items that need correction and record them for correction. Listen to the concerns of the residents we meet and address them. Work to con connect community members to the resource partners engaged in the initiative. And number nine, if it's broken, let's try to fix it. So if the street lights out, if there's trash in the alley, if there's a tree that needs trimming, if there's a tree that needs replacing, we got four days to make it happen. Let's bring some resources to bear. Let's listen to the citizens here and let's make a difference. Our safety message is always, Members keep communications with portable radio, maintain central awareness, dress appropriately for weather conditions, monitor your radio, maintain accountability and report in, maintain adequate hydration, see something, say something, report any suspicious activity immediately to operations. Our incident uh, is broken up into uh, what, what uh, to those of you who are new to this, what we do is we organize really in four key areas. So it's operations, which is really the boots on the ground, the people on the ground making the difference, the logistics to support those, the finance to track the costs, the planning group, which kind of reevaluates where we are through the four, four days and maybe tweaks things a little bit in the directions we go in, and uh, last but not least, the evaluation component of the AAR. So when we leave, we'll be able to mark our progress, how much, how much we've done uh, to, to, to hopefully um, take this as a model and to uh, build upon it and to recreate it in other areas of, of uh, our great city. So at this time, what I'd like to do is to introduce to the uh, operational commander, Kevin Cleary. Kevin's, Kevin's really functioned as the planning person up to this point. He's now going to switch over to the operations chief and Kevin will introduce each branch director on their operations to say a quick couple sentences about what they vision for the next four days as far as the progress that they're going to ascertain while we're all here together. Thank you, Chief Maloney. The mayor mentioned this is a pilot program. I promise the first thing the AER is we need a bigger tent. <laughs> but also, Chief, before jumping into the operations, we have some guests here that just want to say a few words of greetings. So if I could ask Reverend King to give you a words of greeting here as a member of the community. First, first I'd like to say I'm a native Baltimore. grew up right here in Oliver, just two blocks down the street. Uh, I have the privilege of pastoring the church I grew up in, Memorial Baptist, North Carolina Preston. Uh, and so I'm very happy uh, to have uh, uh, Mayor Rollins-Blake, uh, City Council President Jack Young, uh, Council Representative uh, 
Carl Stokes here at the Oliver Community. Uh, it, it's my honor to have you all here. Uh, I want you to know that Oliver is a vibrant and growing community. And as a member of BUILD, uh, Memorial Baptist, along with other member okay, churches, okay. Zion Baptist, the Ark Church, uh, Knox Presbyterian, and St. Francis Xavier, have committed to the work of rebuilding here in the Oliver community. Uh, BUILD has a 35-year history of building here in, uh, in Baltimore from uh, the living wage uh, effort to building homes in Sandtown, Winchester, uh, to uh, the Child First Authority that's in 14 uh, schools, after school programs in Baltimore. And here in Oliver, the Build Check churches have invested $1.2 million in, uh, and partnered with the city, uh, the state, and federal agencies in order to rebuild in this community. We've also partnered with private foundations and raised a $10 million uh, reinvestment fund where we're building new homes here in the Olive community. Uh, in collaboration with our primary partner, uh, the Reinvestment Fund of Philadelphia, uh, we formed TRF Development Partners and have invested over 30, $32 million in Baltimore City since 2005. Uh, and we are currently uh, sitting in the midst of, of the Oliver community where over 70 new homes have been built and renovated and as a result, as a result of our efforts. Uh, Preston Place has employed some 85 persons since its inception. Uh, currently 85% of them are Baltimore residents and 68% of them are minority workers. And, and we continue to be very uh, optimistic about Baltimore's future, not just here in Oliver, but Baltimore and particularly here in Oliver where uh, build efforts have paved the way for other developers such as Come Home Baltimore to come to our community and to begin to rebuild. Uh, so not only uh, are there other private investors, but, but I'm just excited about uh, Mayor Rawlings Blake's commitment to, uh, to Baltimore with the Vacants to Value Program. Uh, I'm significantly uh, uh, excited about uh, this uh, public safety initiative here in Oliver. And I too believe it can be a model that can be spread throughout uh, Baltimore City. Uh, I, I will caution you uh, because having been in the community for, for some time, um, uh, you, you may find some people who are very receptive to your being here, but then there are others who are going to be suspicious uh, because they aren't accustomed to uh, having this type of activity in the community. But I, I believe that if we go about doing it as, uh, as the Deputy Chief has already stated, that we'll find that the residents are, are very excited that you're here and, and when they recognize that there's a partnership that's going to change this community, uh, they will be excited as all of you are and excited as I am. Thank you so much for coming to Oliver. We're glad that you're here. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Now, I'm not sure if it's Minister Dunaway or Howard. You're giving me Howard, Howard, Howard Roberts from the Oliver Community Center and Association. Thank you, Mr. Cleary. Uh, again, welcome all. We look at you more as future residents of Oliver than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking forward to this opportunity. Any opportunity that gives us an opportunity to take advantage of all of the resources the city makes available in collaboration with the energy and, and, and interests of the residents of Oliver, we look forward to. So we're looking forward to not only taking part in the door knocking process, the uh, what we call, or what we're calling the Resource Day on Saturday uh, at Oliver, in addition to all the other opportunities to follow up on not only the needs, but the, the uh, future objectives of the residents. We're looking forward to that. We want to thank you again, Mayor, for being here, Council President, uh, Councilman, uh, as well as the pastors, and we look forward to this collaboration. Thank you. Thank you. Our, our last guest from the Johnson, I saw you hiding over there. <laughs> Operation Oliver, and then looking into the operations. Hey, y'all. Um, I'm new to the group. Um, I wasn't born in Baltimore. Uh, I've only been here less than two years. Um, most of the work that's been done in Oliver has been laid. The foundation has been laid by the pastors, uh, by the councilmen, uh, by all the other leaders. Uh, by far, I don't consider myself a community leader. I consider myself an individual who, who saw the work they've been doing, who saw the work that, that, that developers like Bill and David Wierenski come on Baltimore have been doing, and decided to pitch it. You know, it's a military way to, to see a problem and try to fix it. You know, I don't have all the solutions, but I, I know that Oliver is a great place to live. I chose to live here. 
I could have chose anywhere in the country to live, but I, I chose Oliver. And I chose Oliver because of his bones. That's great bones. Unfortunately, there's some issues, you know. You know, there's, there's some drug issues, there's some crime issues, it's like anywhere else in, in, in Baltimore or anywhere else in the country. But I think now is the time for the good people to stand out of the shadow. The bad people have been in the, in the spotlight way too long. And it, it's time for us to stand in, in the light. And I think the mayor, along with her staff, have decided, yeah, it's time for us to stand in the light. And we all should get together and figure out a way to fix our issues. Because all of us growing. It's going to grow with or without anyone telling us. But if we push it along a little a little harder, maybe we'll get more residents out of this. Maybe we'll get a little bit more shine out of this. So I'm just finding my little piece in this. And working will come on Baltimore and work with my veterans. We need something to do. <laughs> I mean, we've done a lot for our country, but we don't know how to measure that. How do you measure a war? What good we did? Um, we want to measure our our work by doing what back in our community. So give us, challenge us, give us something to do, and I'm pretty sure you'll you'll like the results of what we can do. Thank you. Operation structure regarding public safety. We have Captain Quick on the other side. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. <laughs> I feel safer now between the commissioner and the captain. <laughs> we have a PowerPoint. Matt, I'm going to charge you with. Um, it oh, should be here in PowerPoint. Yeah. You can punch it else. up for the captain. Sure. Captain, do you want to step up here a little bit? I'm going to stand next to Kim where I feel safe. Uh, again, Captain Rob Quick in the Eastern District, Major Keith Matthews, my commanding officer, uh, commanding officer of the Eastern District, just uh, joined us in the tent. Uh, again, just really briefly, kind of give you an idea of what we're doing in, in Oliver. Uh, basically, the boundaries, we, we split Oliver into two uh, zones for, for our primary purposes, uh, North Avenue uh, to Middle Street, Broadway to Eden as being zone one. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and then basically the Eden to Asquith being zone two. Uh, so we've dedicated some resources from the BPD uh, as far as uh, uh, officers uh, from our discretionary units. We're going to concentrate zone one, zone two. That'll be their real estate, live it, learn it, love it, to make uh, enforcement in those areas. Uh, basically, some of the strategies that we're using, uh, knock and talks will be conducted. Uh, again, we know who the known bad guys are, our registered gun offenders, our robbery recidivists, our burglary recidivists, etc. Uh, the bad guys in the neighborhood, we're just making a regular community of knocking on the door, saying hi, let them know we know who they are, where they are, uh, and they try to keep their, uh, their act in check. Uh, curfew violations, we're having uh, some issues with juvenile crime. Uh, in, the, uh, in the community and the district as a whole. Uh, so we're going to try to uh, ramp up our daytime curfews for the kids not in school. Nighttime curfews uh, is for the kids hanging out late at night. Narcotics enforcement, again, we all know really the biggest problem in Oliver is the thriving drug trade. Uh, we've made some really great strides, taking out some organizations lately, uh, Pastor, hopefully. Uh, the, the area in front of uh, Caroline and, and Leah Bale has been much uh, much better since Christmas. That was the Christmas present to the Oliver community. Uh, it was uh, 30 indictments. And we Working with the state's attorney's office, Mr. Hazel, uh, Mr. Bernstein, as well as our federal partners, uh, we were able to take out one drug organization from top to bottom. Uh, unfortunately, there's more than one organization in Ireland, so we still have work to do. Uh, which segues me into, again, State's Attorney's Office. Basically, uh, every arrest that's made in Oliver uh, is being set aside special. We have a dedicated prosecutor from Mr. Bernstein's office who is looking at these cases, making sure that they get the maximum attention that's actually needed, that they don't slip through the cracks. Next, please. Uh, quality of life crimes, again, we, we, we know zero tolerance doesn't work, but at the same time, we understand the community wants relief uh, from the nuisance crimes, the, the, the open drinking, uh, the loitering, et cetera. So, so we are using that as part of our strategy. Uh, outside agencies, again, beginning March 12th, as we are here right now, uh, housing, sanitation, health department, et cetera, all working in conjunction with the police department to try to address some of the other structural issues. And number seven, the satellite police station. Earl was gracious enough uh, to allow us to use the model at 1400 Bond here as a satellite Eastern District police station for the Sector 2 officers. This is Sector 2 of the Eastern District. So for the last couple of days and for the next couple of days, uh, we will be conducting all our shift change, roll calls, whatnot, actually at this location. So it kind of makes it look like there's a mini police station right smack in the middle of the Oliver community. So thank you, Earl. Uh, 
slide, please. Uh, utilize them. We're also using uh, some of the undercover uh, officers in the community doing by bus. Literally just before this started, I heard several arrests that were made in the 17 hour block of Broadway as well as Bond and Lafayette uh, just this morning as, as we were we were set up here. Um, so again, just be mindful. Uh, you're going to see some people in the community uh, that are officers in, in plain clothes. Uh, next, please. Uh, and then just a real brief uh, description of events for the next couple of days. Uh, obviously, the kickoff that we have here today uh, with Madam Mayor. Um, uh, essentially, uh, we are here for that. Next slide, please. Um, <coughs> tomorrow, uh, as was the plan today, uh, was for our NSU officers, neighborhood services officers, to partner with some of the other city services and do a walkthrough in Oliver to offer some other services. I believe the decision has been made to cancel that for today based on uh, weather. As such, uh, we will have those officers still deployed in the community for presence uh, and, and hope that out. But hopefully by tomorrow, uh, if the weather improves the remainder of the week, again, that will be part of it. Uh, the outreach walkers with police presence and escorts. Next, please. Um, on uh, Thursday, March 14th, uh, neighborhood exchange with the Eastern District officers, 1,600 to 1,800 hours at the Oliver Community Center. Uh, basically, we're going to cycle every officer that works the neighborhood through to make sure that if uh, relationships aren't already made uh, with the clergy and the community folks and whatnot, that uh, it'll be some face time uh, for everyone to get to know each other and get to know the officers who are patrolling your neighborhood. Uh, next, please. Um, uh, and then the Peace Walk on Friday uh, from 1800 hours. I believe Madam Mayor may uh, participate in that as, as well, um, schedule permitting. Uh, again, that's going to kick off the Oliver Center at 1800 hours. Uh, again, tour the Eastern District uh, with, with some of our clergy uh, and, and have some community outreach and some prayer in the community. Next, please. Uh, and then Saturday, the final day, uh, a, a resource fair at Oliver, again, from 930 to 1400. I'm understanding there'll be some uh, employment opportunities there, uh, other city services, BPD recruitment, and explorers will be there uh, as well. Uh, so again, we'll, we'll be on site to try to help out with that as best we can. Next, please. Uh, and briefly, just the crime in Oliver year to date. Uh, violent crime in Oliver is down 27% and 25% yeah. respectively year to date. Um, essentially what you're looking at there is the shaded area is what we call our Oliver enforcement zone. That's our area concentration. Again, that's the Eaton Street to Broadway north of the middle. Uh, but then collectively the, the larger box is the entire Oliver community. Uh, and again, in the special enforcement zone, violent crime is down 27% in Oliver as a whole. Violent crime is down 25%. Unfortunately, property crime is up, and it is largely burglaries of the houses under construction. And I've worked with uh, Cam, and I've worked with Earl, and some of our other developers uh, just to try to harden some of these targets. Uh, but in the process of rehab, we have people coming in, stealing copper pipes, taking the contractor's tools, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so again, from the police perspective, we're trying to, to focus a little bit more on those, and, and we just ask help from the developer's perspective. Don't make it easy targets for these guys to be able to walk in and, uh, and grab the property. Uh, and I'm, I'm convinced that that's going to turn around. Uh, last slide, just real briefly, the enforcement efforts in Oliver. Uh, again, that's the Oliver neighborhood as a whole. Uh, year to date, enforcement is up 7%. Uh, that's actually showing red in the special enforcement zone, but what not what is not included in those numbers, again, was our federal uh, arrest that we made uh, early, uh, late last year. So again, that technically went on 2012's numbers, but I think actually if you put that in, uh, enforcement is up, and, and I think I see an impact in the neighborhood uh, since that as, as far as decreased activity. Hopefully those of you who are here every day uh, uh, agree with that as well. I know uh, being uh, a part of this and being engaged in this means really shaking up the way you do business. Um, going, uh, doing the, the, the roll call uh, over at the model home is, is a meaningful thing that we're doing, but I know it, it requires a lot from the officers. So please express uh, from me the, the gratitude that I have for their, for their willingness to be uh, a real part of the solution here in Oliver. Yes, and I, I do think that we have one Oliver resident here who has been here for at least one who's been here for more than 30 years, and that's uh, Ms. Brothers. And I wanted to thank you. Hey, Ms. has been here for 30 years. Who else has been here for more than 30 years? That's well, I'm not 30 years. <laughs> You're right. Uh, 29. But I, I do want to, again, I, I, I do want to, uh, Pastor, thank you. And, and Mrs. Brothers, because this is what it's about. You know what Oliver can be. 
and uh, just the fact that you're here means so much to me. I, I really do want to thank you. Can I? Well, hang on a second. We're going. We're going in order, please. Sure. Very tight schedule. Next, as I thank you, Madam Mayor, for that segue, I call on uh, Deputy State's Attorney George Hazel to give his report. And I, I mentioned to all of my people here, we're here to give a briefing, which means brief reports. <laughs> I think that's a hint that he tells the lawyer to be brief. <laughs> I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to be very brief. I just want to say on behalf of uh, the State's Attorney, Greg Bernstein, our office is thrilled to be a part of this initiative. We're thrilled to help in any way we can, in any way in which the mayor uh, Deputy Maloney feels uh, we can be of help. We're certainly willing to be of help. Uh, for us, this is really something that um, is really connected to something we've tried to do. Uh, about a year or so ago, uh, Mr. Bernstein decided to restructure the office around the community prosecution model. And the idea behind that was that instead of just having ASAs who know narcotics and know guns and know other types of crimes, they actually have ASAs who know the communities in which they're serving. <coughs> so they can tell the difference between a case that's going to matter and a case that doesn't matter. Uh, between the, the, the defendants who are really um, driving the violence in, in the area and knowing where to focus their resources to actually have an impact in the communities. And so what we're doing here is really sort of an outgrowth of that, and, and we're just excited to be a part of it. Uh, now not only do we have ASAs who are going to be assigned to the Eastern District as a whole as a result of this initiative, we now have ASAs who are going to be assigned specifically to the Oliver community. Uh, as Captain Quick mentioned, uh, there will be cases that come in. Those cases will be flagged. As we see those cases coming in, we will highlight them for special attention, and that can mean a lot of things. Um, as an initial matter, it means certainly separating out those defendants who we know, you know, might need some services and might need some help and might need some things to get back on their feet, and those uh, defendants who, frankly, just need to go away for a while and, and who have uh, had their chance and, and who just continue to cause problems in the community and, and who need to, to stay in jail. Um, and so as a part of that, you know, we'll be looking at uh, bail recommendations as cases come in, trying to see high bails or no bails, uh, for defendants who, again, have uh, proven themselves over and over again to be a problem in the community, uh, we will be uh, trying to ag aggressively prosecute using mandatory uh, sentences when applicable and when we feel it's warranted based on their activity in the area, and really just doing everything we can uh, to be aggressive, to be targeted, to be focused on going after the worst of the worst in this community and making sure those people get off the street and after Captain Quick and his folks do their work, that they stay off the street. Um, and so that's our way of trying to help. Again, we're excited, we're thrilled, we think this is going to be a phenomenal opportunity to really make an impact in this community, and, and we're glad to help. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I mentioned already, because of the weather, we will not be doing the deployment for door knocking, but the person who will be leading that task is, is Charles Smith, who's president of our Citizen Board. Charles, a really 30 second description of what you're going to be doing tomorrow. Thursday and Friday. Okay. Hello again, my name is Darrell Smith, uh, the president of the Baltimore Surf uh, Community Emergency Response Team, Citizens School Council. I'll be in charge of the door knocking. Our main goal is to get the citizens along with the teams engaged and also make them feel personally uh, invited to the um, resource fair. As far as Surf and Citizens Council Corps, we look forward to uh, working with the city and other resources in the future. Thank you, Charles. Next, I'd like to call on Sarah Morris Compton, representing the Health Department. Thank you, Kevin. So just really quickly, I'll just share a little bit about some of the services that the Health Department will be bringing in collaboration with various partners. And as residents' needs are identified through the door knocking, we hope that we've been able to bring um, both our resources in the Health Department, but also reaching out to our partners who aren't within city government. So some examples of some of the services that will be available to residents of the neighborhood. Um, on, during the resource fair, we'll have the needle exchange van out uh, where there are concerns related to substance abuse. The needle exchange program also has um, slots for treatment. So I know one of the issues that's been identified in this neighborhood is access to um, substance abuse treatment, and that's something that the needle exchange van will be able to assist with. Additionally, the um, HIV, mobile HIV STD testing will be available um, in the area near the community center. Within the resource center, um, there'll be our Be More for Healthy Babies. So the range of services related to maternal and child health will be there uh, for people who want to attend, immunizations, cancer treatment information. Um, in addition to um, the State Department of Human Services will be there to provide information about SNAP services. And I'm pleased to also acknowledge the um, Delmarva Foundation of Maryland. Uh, they have a very innovative program focused on senior nutrition, which is actually launching in April, but they'll be attending the resource there so residents who attend the fair will learn about this ongoing program. It's essentially a one-stop shop 
for seniors who are interested in access to food, but also physical activity programming, and a number of health screenings related to chronic disease. So those are just a few of the things that will be available for these persons on Saturday. Thank you, Sarah. Next, I'd like to move into the neighborhood activities. And I'll, again, I'll ask people to be very brief. I know the commissioner has a PowerPoint. Matt, can you queue that up for the commissioner? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin and uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you for bringing us all together here. Um, really, I think what's important here is that uh, you asked us to put together a program to address vacant housing in this city, and we've done that, and we've worked uh, uh, with you. You've been to many of our events. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the background and, and then zoom in on, on, on Oliver. And very quickly, but, sir, because we're... Okay, but, but, but it is important that, and you recognize, that we need all the other services. So police, fire, transportation, DPW, health, and so forth, and community. So everybody knows the problem, 16,000 vacants, uh, uh, how we got here, 50 years population loss, all that. The mayor has to put the, together a strategy of six prongs. Uh, I'm going to just quickly go through some of those that relate to, especially to Oliver. Uh, the first one was streamlining the disposition of city-owned property. We've done that. We do it three times as fast now, and we've sold five times as many houses uh, in the last year as uh, the year before we started. Uh, get those properties back out for use. Doesn't do any good for us to sit on. Uh, second strategy uh, is streamlining code enforcement using the $900 citation. And I want to thank the City Council, the, uh, President Young and uh, Councilman Stokes and the entire council. These are the kinds of tools that make a difference. Uh, being able to go out there, it's like a parking ticket as opposed to having, sending a lawyer to prosecute every case. Let's go to strategy three. Strategy three really directly relates to Oliver. It's a strategy where we recognize there are pockets of strength uh, abutting other areas uh, of strength. So here we have Hopkins. Uh, we have the East Baltimore Development Initiative area, and we have Oliver abutting all of all of that strength, uh, and and also this proximity to downtown and uh, the Midtown area. So very very much a, a, a neighborhood with with a lot going for it. So how do we build on that? So what we've done is we put we've used those code enforcement tools. A bottom line is we've seen over 47 million dollars of private investment already. Uh, we've seen. <coughs> Uh, citywide, we've seen 975 properties in the in the two years that we've been at it uh, that have been fully renovated or under construction. We use a receivership tool, which is very important, where our lawyers go to court if the owner refuses uh, to do the right thing. We go to court and get a receiver uh, appointed. The property is auctioned off. Madam Mayor, we have approximately 1,000 properties in the receivership pipeline. So between those that are under rehab or completed and the pipeline, we're talking close to 2,000 vacant properties. Let's quickly go to home buyer incentives. Ken Strong is here uh, and his team. Uh, we have $10,000 home buyer incentives for people buying formerly vacant houses. We've done 123 of those to date. Madam Mayor, 28% of those are to new residents of the city. Uh, also, I want to highlight here Wells Fargo City Lift Program. $15,000 home buyer incentives. There are 66 commitments to date. Please note this, on April 5th and 6th at the convention center, there'll be a major event uh, for people who want to get the $15,000 incentive. You must sign up in advance. So we'll have information about that uh, at our uh, uh, booth on Saturday at the fair. Uh, we zoomed in on Oliver. Uh, Oliver, Madam Mayor, had 300, more than 300 vacants of approximately 1,200 properties in that footprint when we started. It's an area, as I said, with a lot of strength, but we needed to address those vacants. Today, um, as a consequence of the activity to date, the vacants in Oliver have dropped from 327 to 236 in the first two years. So that is a huge, huge success there and we're going to continue to work so let's keep going in now th these last images are just images of work now these were the first this actually predates Vegas of value but these are the first new houses in Oliver just around the corner here first new houses built in 50 years pressed in place 
TRF and Build, I want to thank you for your partnership here. Here is, here is uh, before and after on the 1200 block of North Bond Street, a, a, a street characterized by many, many vacants, now shiny new houses. Uh, 1500 block of East Biddle, same thing. 1400 block of North Bond Street. You can see all the signs here. Uh, 1200 block of East Eager Street. And this is the one that everybody sees driving up and down. This is the 1200 block of Broadway, all the burned out buildings. Here it is today. Okay, in conclusion, uh, the program works, but we need a holistic approach with all the other support services, so we very much appreciate, appreciate that. Our people will be here all week. Uh, Deputy uh, Commissioner Scriber is in the back here as well. Uh, his team will be here, uh, and Deputy uh, uh, Strong's team will be here uh, throughout the week. And then on sat Saturday the 16th, please go to the resource fair, because both of them will have tables there talking about how you get home energy assistance, uh, weatherization, other light services, how you can get those Wells Fargo grants, and so forth. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Director Fox, can you give a presentation on the workings of PPW? Uh, it's, it's a great opportunity to be here to work with the Oliver community and all the other city agencies. As you know, we, we have Ms. Tarina here, who is the community liaison and been working with uh, many of the community meetings. Uh, uh, community associations, and she will be with the entire group the whole week. The things that we offer is clean, keeping the uh, Oliver community clean, and we have the solid waste that's doing the trash pickup. We're also pushing recycling, but if there's any area that deals with trash, that's where the Department of Public Works will be, picking up trash. Dirty alleys, we have crews dedicated totally to just cleaning up dirty alleys. If you see any, but you can help us out and you can help out ACD. If you see someone dumping, please call us so we can react very quickly to stop it. Most of the time it's been there for days and we have to come out there and clean it up and it's difficult trying to check it, uh, check who did it uh, days later. So we ask for your help in doing that. Our goal is to keep Baltimore clean and achieve the mayor's goal of 10,000 families in 10 years. And a clean city will draw people to Baltimore City. So that's what we want to do. And you can help us out in doing that. We also have rat abatements. If you see rats running around, let us know so we can get our crews out there to do rat baiting and get rid of those rats. Help us out when you put when your neighbors put out trash. Have them put the lids on the trash can. Rats go where there's a food source, and you've heard that over and over again. Put the lids on the trash can, and that will help us out. So we have the uh, solid waste and water and wastewater. If there's sewer backups, if there's drainage issues, we have our crews going around all of the community. We'll be with the walkthrough, checking those areas to make sure your storm drains are clean, that your streets are swept, and that, uh, and that there's no leaking water lines throughout the area. So we have crews out there, we won't be checking today, because we won't know if it's a leak or not. So. <laughs> but we will have, when it dries up, we'll have crews out there checking to see if there's water leaking there. So that's what uh, we think that we do. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Mr. Murphy, can you give a report on the Department of Transportation? Good morning. Uh, my name is Frank Murphy. I'm the acting director of transportation. Uh, I drive through the Oliver community every day on my way to work because I live in northeast Baltimore. I've seen a lot of the signs of progress, many of which Commissioner Graziano shared. Very exciting things going on here. We're very happy to be part of this. Um, our issue mainly is, is fixing up the infrastructure, keeping things in good service. Oh, uh, Frank, I want to turn the rain up a little bit more. <laughs> I don't know if anybody here is here, so uh, it's really kind of free time frame to what we're doing. We work with Kevin to, uh, on the preparations for this. The most visible sign is the fencing that we installed in this block. Uh, we have a team of inspectors here today. They're going to be out roaming through the neighborhood looking for potholes and things that need fixing. They'll be out tonight looking for street lights that are out. We're going to get all that into the 311 system. And then starting tomorrow, have teams out here fixing things. We also have a long range 
um, plan that we're going to do. We're going to be working with the, the uh, residents of the area and with uh, Commissioner Graziano's folks to develop a comprehensive plan to look at traffic issues, you know, identify speeding problems, traffic concerns, parking shortages, so we can come up with a plan to address those kinds of things. So, thank you for letting us participate. Thank you. Somebody in replacement that we document it and, and 
and uh, we're trying to encourage that. One of the ways we're going to track that is we work with um, Healthcare Access Maryland with our information and referral line. So anyone that calls and accesses treatment, if we actually get them into a treatment slot, we'll be able to identify that they came from our outreach efforts. We'll be able to provide a report of that at the end of the efforts. Um, and then as well, on Friday, on Saturday, um, Kelvin Silver, who's our Director of Special Population Services, will be coordinating our efforts, um, and we will have folks that are help, that are able to provide um, information about education and information about substance abuse, accessing treatment and recovery services. So as well, people that are interested in getting into treatment that maybe don't identify themselves during the door knocking, on Saturday we'll be able to go up um, and talk to someone about getting into treatment. Thank you very much. Going from operations to planning, none of this happens without good planning, good people working on the plan. Captain Rich Williams from the Fire Department is our planning chief, and then he's going to introduce Chad Kenny from City Staff. Thanks, Kevin. Um, actually, I'm kind of glad I got the seat that was leaking since it's myself and my crew that put the tent up. But <laughs> <laughs> I kind of felt bad if it was somebody else getting seats on, so if you're getting dripped on, I apologize. Uh, we were hoping for a little bit better weather, but uh, sorry, we'll take what we can get and by the attempts uh, working out. I wish it was a little bigger, but all right, moving forward. Um, you have the IAP, we've covered it. Uh, under the page six, the Unified Command Organizational Structure, actually page seven up at the top planning section sheet. Um, the org chart is on the whiteboard. We're kind of packed in here, but what we'll, we'll do is, uh, if anybody's kind of curious as in the ICS or the NIMS, how we run any of our incidents or events, we follow the ICS structure, um, and we're doing that with this as well. Um, first, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, next I'll go ahead and uh, Chad Kenny. He's going to be the Situation Unit leader, and I'll let you talk a little bit and show us how we're going to be doing. Right, good morning, everyone. Chad morning. Kenny, Director of City Stat. Um, we put together a tracker to just track all the uh, operations and resources that all the agencies have presented will be providing during this week. Uh, we've got one for the daily operations for the more operational agencies, 35 indicators, 31 services across about nine agencies. We'll also be tracking uh, the resource fair and connecting resources that uh, connect people to resources at that. We've got 19 indicators for 16 services. Um, I have it here, but I'm not going to take the time to pass it out. Um, someone from each agency should be reporting to us daily. Um, what you've done, so whatever you're going to do, please make sure you track. I want to reiterate that. Um, and we'll find a way to give you credit for it. Um, so, so make sure you get it in here and send that to me for now and my analyst Jane Lewis, uh, who's worked very closely with Kevin Cleary and the rest of the team uh, to put indicators together. And if there's anything we miss, let's get it on here. Um, I think that's it for my end. All right, uh, just thanks, Chad. Um, real quick, just to follow us, we track. Uh, when this is all over and done with, we're going to get an after action report together. Uh, basically, it's going to be made up of everything that we've collected, things that went well, things that we could have done a little differently to make it easier or, or smoother. Um, so based on this AAR, we can use that and turn it into our next IAP for our next neighborhood or the next part of the city that we move this project. As you're explaining that, when you say the AAR and IEP, just explain that in all. Yes, uh, the IEP you have here, that's the Incident Action Plan. Um, the AAR is the After Action Report. Basically capture what we've learned, what we did right, what we didn't do right. Um, like the 10. Like the 10. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. I want to thank you. I think we're just about the end. In terms of the operational period, we're now in our first period. 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. each day. We'll be deploying as city workers, door knockers. Uh, uh, tomorrow, we're supposed to have good weather for the rest of the week. And then from 3 p.m. around the clock to 8 a.m., East Logistic is going to be keeping the neighborhood safe and strong using the uh, the model home as their base. So, and then hopefully folks will come to the resource fair on Saturday. And again, your work counts, so count your work. Madam Mayor, thank you for bringing this all together here. Thank you. Before, before we go, I want to give the mayor the last word. Um, two things. Uh, so, so this tent, everybody when they were a kid played kick the can, right? 
Okay, so you set up a can, you run, you somebody kicks the can. Always come back to the tent. Always come back to the tent with your information, with your dialogue, if you want to converse issues, if you guys want to debate. Um, the key here is we need to think of what we can do for sustainability. So as everyone is gathering together and you're sharing ideas, make sure they get documented. But use this tent as kind of like a focal place. Uh, anything, any problem you have, any, any, any uh, thing you need, no matter how small it is, come to us. Collectively, we'll figure out a way to do it. Um, be safe. Be, uh, take care of each other. Enjoy each other's company. It's a great opportunity to really uh, do some good. And, um, and it's going to be a great op operational period. Uh, Madam Mayor, final word. Thank you very much. I want to again thank everyone for coming out. I want to thank our, our neighborhood partners again. We can't do it uh, without you. Please, you know what you've been doing, but most of what I what I notice about most uh, real community leaders is they don't like to talk about what they're doing. But in order for this to work, we have to we have to start and and make sure that you're talking uh, talk this up because people need to know about the resource there. People need to know about the um, the fact that the fighter, the fire uh, fighters are going to come knocking on doors, uh, checking to make sure the home is safe. That that you're going to see additional presence in the community that you might not be familiar with. But people need to know what we're doing. Uh, that is very important. If you're here as a part of a, an agency, um, please remember to, to use the the means that we have, including social media, to talk about what we're doing. Get the information out. If you are a um, non-governmental partner, uh, please again use the, the uh, methods that you have to get the word out, to talk about the resources that are going to be available. None of these resources matter if we're not connecting them to as many people as possible. And when you look at who's going to participate in the resource fair, this has been carefully crafted to speak to the needs of this community. And it's only going to work if we make sure as many people as possible are there. So please, 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 uh, we need you know, especially when it's raining. You know, we don't get. I'm prayerful that the rain will stop. Uh, with with our luck, uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> but um, I know that we can. Uh, we've overcome. We've overcome more. Uh, we can overcome having to do all of this in in inclement, in inclement weather. And and lastly, I, I cannot tell you how proud I am of uh, all the team uh, for coming together to put this together. Um, I've been in elected office since 1995, and uh, during my time, I spent a lot of time learning and, and listening and trying to figure out ways that we could do things better. And one thing I always knew, and I've always said, is when we work together, when we pull all of our resources together and we put everything on the table, that's when we'll have a chance to get the best that we can for our community, and that's what we're doing here. And I, I'm, I'm really hopeful because I know that you know, these resources, Baltimore is resource rich, and we have to make, find uh, new and creative ways to get those resources to the people that need them. And my hope and my prayer is that we found it uh, in this uh, strategy. And I know that uh, if it's going to work, we have the right people around the table, in the tent, uh, to make it happen. So thank you all uh, for your commitment uh, and for weathering, weathering this storm uh, with us until we know that we get to better days on the other side. Thank you. So our next briefing is Weinrich. <laughs>